My name is Matthew Byrne and I'm a traditional singer from St. John's, Newfoundland with a kind of, um, uh, a, kind of a lineage of, of singing and song finding uh, from, uh, from Placentia Bay. My folks are, are both from Placentia Bay um, and they are from resettled communities where a lot of the music comes from and, uh, and so I was kind of born into a singing tradition and was lucky enough to kind of grow up surrounded by a lot of traditional music and a lot of songs and, and so uh, I've kind of, uh, the, the repertoire that I'm kind of, um, that I'm singing is, is kind of, it's in, a lot of it is kind of inherited, uh, is the word that I use most often, you know, songs that, uh, songs that I grew up hearing and songs that I've gotten from my folks and, and, and their contemporaries as well as older singers in my, uh, in my family, grandparents and people like that. Um, and it's a kind of a, kind of a lesser known uh, repertoire in a lot of cases, a lesser known repertoire of traditional songs. And I kind of like, kind of uh, reversioning or reimagining traditional songs that kind of have been, have, uh, you know, are not heard all the time, I guess you could say. The River Driver is uh, a song I've been singing for a few years now and I decided to finally do a, a version of it on, on, on the CD. Uh, I learned it from the singing of uh, Jim Payne and Fergus O'Byrne. I've gotten some wonderful songs off of them over the years. And uh, it's, the, it's a Newfoundland version of a logging song that was collected on the west coast of the island in the Codroy Valley uh, from a man named John T. O'Quinn. And uh, he was the one who sourced this, uh, this version of the River Driver. It's been found in other parts of Atlantic Canada as well. And this is the, this is the Newfoundland version. I was of the age of 18 when I went upon the drive. After six months hard labor, back home I did arrive. I courted me a pretty girl, it was her cause me. drunk wherever I'm ready and get sober by and by and if this river don't drown me it's all I mean to roll. for I'm a river driver and I'm far away from Build my love a castle all upon some mountain high where she can sit and view me as I go marching by. Where she can sit and view me while on I mean go for. can wrap me up in a blanket and lay me down to die and bring to me a bluebird who will sing for me alone for I'm a river driver and I'm far Drunk wherever I'm ready, get sober by and by. And if this river don't drown me, then on I mean to For I'm a river driver and I'm far away from home. Yeah. 
Yes, I'm a river driver and I'm far away from It's helped me learn a lot about Newfoundland and the people here and the history here. I mean, even when I did, like I didn't start doing anything professionally music-wise until I did, um, until I completed my kind of academic career. Like I didn't, I didn't start recording and touring or anything like that until I had a, a master's in history. And so this plays in well with the, master, with the interest in history. And I did a, a, a minor in Newfoundland studies. I did it all at, at Memorial University. And it, it, Ever since then, more and more, I've come to realize how much in line this approach to music and kind of viewing them as kind of sources of the past is a, a, just an extension of that history that I studied and that, that, that in the academic world, you know, even though this is not, I don't take an, a real academic approach to traditional music, but I think subconsciously I'm still treating it the same way that I was kind of trained to do in my academic career is to kind of use them and look at them and what can I learn about the language and the people and the places that are in these songs and for me every single song you know whether it's from Newfoundland or whether it's from Ireland or whether it's from you know the Appalachian tradition or whether it's from you know Scotland or, or England it's telling me about that time and place and those people from from which it came you know and I I, I find that fascinating Love is a flower that blooms or a song this is a song called Jim Harris uh, that I learned from my father. Dad said he got it from originally from the singing of my great uncle Dan Lake uh, from Cladis Harbor. Um, and it was also sung by my great aunt Flora Gambin from Cladis Harbor. But it was actually written by a man from Placentia Bay. His name was Peter Leonard. And, uh, and he wrote this song about a, uh, a, a skipper's unfortunate day on the water. Twas in 1934, on the last day light in May, Jim Harris in the Ronald P. from St. Karen sailed away. And he sailed away in search of bait Till he came to Paradise Sound Where to his sad and great mistake The Irene he ran down As they lay to their anchor All hands was filled with joy not thinking any accident to them was drawing nigh until the Ronald hove in sight more joyful did they feel with swelling sails and flowing sheets taking eight knots from the reel she was like some frightened animal, the white foam cross her face. Neither sheet nor tack now did she slack while entering in this place. And the boats, they were well scattered, for them there was plenty of room. But she kept too near to the Irene's head, and she broke off her jibboom. And it pierced the Ronald's mainsail, about three cloths from the lee. When the main boom left the main mast, an awful sight to see. And it gave those boys a cruel surprise. What to do they did not know. So without their skipper's orders, their anchor did let go. Jim Harris, he leapt on the deck, fired down his cap and swore, saying such a tangle now as this I've never seen before. 
I've been charged of schooners great and small. I've brought them far and near, even across the broad Atlantic where the storms they rage severe. Now if this was some youngster, what would the people say? For an accident can happen to the best man any day. It's all right when the wheel is going up, when it turns for to go down. Well, you all might meet with the same sad fate as Jim Harris in Paradise Sound.